we had a handle on our paint job started. Or should I say it's it's off the handle. That's definitely what's going on here with this project. So we rolled out the rotisserie, the car got sandblasted, and then the first snafu happened. The first snafu being improper planning. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, get a good look at that. That's an entire bin full of primer rattle cans because I didn't get the gun in the paint pot here before we had the car sandblasted. So that happened. We'll just forget about that for a minute here. Uh, but the next step was building some spacers. A couple two by fours, cut down, a little bit of wood routering, and the car is nice and spaced off the ground. Um, and it's definitely not gonna fall out of the wood. Very nice. Since that was done, it was then time to figure out how I'm gonna fit the front frame sections and the cradle into the front of the car. And so we started the cutting. And there's a whole lot to tell you about this. I mean, it's a lot of hole. Yeah. And then I smashed the firewall a little bit with a hammer. And then we painted all of these things over to make sure it doesn't rust. And that's kind of where we're at with the body shell. I've still got to weld in those giant frame sections you can see there. They're going to need some serious tie-in. And we're going to need the cage out in the car to make sure it has any semblance of safety. Oh, and I forgot to mention that the car will basically be good for exhibition. And most racing bodies will never certify this because I cut out the front frame. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Either way, it's fine. Um, back here, we still have the same giant hole. I have not yet begun the cuts for the rear cradle. It's positioned there underneath the car, and that's fine. Let's stick with one gaping hole at a time and move from there. You can also notice I've gotten the motorbike motor out of the bike, which was unceremoniously cut into small pieces and taken to the scrapyard. I kept the wiring harness, I kept the ECU, um, and that's all fine and dandy. There's good and bad about this engine. The good, it's about 225 pounds, fully dressed. The bad, I think it's a little too tall. I, I really do think that that's a bit tall. I've got to figure out where I'm going to stuff this engine in the car because of the height that it occupies. Um, and so that leaves me with a, a big packaging conundrum. However, there's still good about the engine, and that's this funny guy right here on the valve cover. Um, that's actually an air port for the exhaust system with reed valves underneath that cover. And this car, or this, this engine in, in the motorcycle, um, actually pulls fresh air from here with the exhaust pulses into the manifold to burn any unburnt fuel um, mixed before the catalyst. So that might be really cool for anti-lag because everything needs turbos, um, but we'll see. That, that might be fine. Um, so, yep, that's pretty much where things are at. We've got a primer shell with holes and more holes. We've got an engine on a stand. Um, we have some poop brown panels that are still around to remind people that it is uh, no longer a baby poop brown car. And um, so hopefully it's a Hachi Goku and not a Hachi Poo Poo. And uh, yep, yep. Stay tuned for, for more adventures of uh, I Do Stupid Things.